folks from building a bridge across the river. Thank God for Amen. them.
that's a wonderful testimony, isn't it? Tell your neighbor beside you, I love the Lord, and I know you do too. Praise God. Amen. 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 God is good to us. God is good. God is good. All the time. All the time. Every day. Every day. God is good. God is good. What a wonderful Wednesday night congregation. Praise God. The church is growing and we're thankful. And God is adding to and we're thankful. And, uh, and we haven't seen anything yet. What God is going to do, I have not seen, ear hath not heard, neither hath it entered the heart of man, the things that God, which God has prepared. It's there. It's done. It's done. It's done. It's there. God has prepared for them that love him. Well, I sure know that means me tonight because I do love God and I do love his people. And I have to do that only because the scripture said, if you love not your brother whom you have seen, how can you love God whom you have not seen? That's a fact, isn't it? So we are just here tonight and what a wonderful group of people are here on a Wednesday night. Praise God, praise God. Amen. Yes. All day long serving Jesus. Pardon me. give this to the congregation where they can pray with us. Sister Mary Thompson has a girlfriend that she knows, a personal friend, and uh, she's in dire physical strength. This person can't swallow very well her food. She's uh, not swallowing well. Uh, her body is not in good condition at all. Many other problems exist. And Sister Mary was led of the Lord. Yes, yeah, this the one you invited to come? And she wanted her to come to church. And she wasn't able to get here. But Sister Mary felt led of God. Have Brother Wilkes to ministry here on the tabernacle myself. To anoint this handkerchief and to pray. And to send it to this individual. Um, we don't know her. Uh, I was hoping she could get here tonight, but then when she touches this handkerchief, we're going to pray that it will impel her, Amen. she'll oh, be delivered, yes. she'll be healed, yes. and uh, she'll come here, and Praise God will bless her. Thank God you have that burden on your heart, Sister Amen. Mary. That's what we're to do. We're to be fishermen of men and uh, women. <laughs> and so I'm going to ask the brethren if you just get around Thank here, brother. I'm going to ask the church to pray out here. You young people, you'll let, I'll let you go into your meeting in a moment, uh, but you pray with us, and let's believe God tonight. And while we're praying for this uh, lady, this individual, um, remember all the rest of the sick and the afflicted. You don't have to say another name. In fact, we're not calling her name. But God knows. God knows the sick. He knows them that are his, those, those that are afflicted. He knows your personal needs tonight. He knows your personal problems. He knows they, those that are not here. God knows all. God is omniscient. He knows everything. There's nothing he does not know. Past, present, future. And he's all powerful. He's omnipotent. And so, and he's omnipresent. He's where everywhere. So we're going to pray right now. Read God. The brethren will lay hands on this together. Pray in the name of Jesus tonight, Lord, we come here before you and we lay our hands of praise upon this handkerchief. In Jesus' name, we do not know this individual, 
We do not know them personally, but we do know that they're in need, Jonathan. Our sister has related they are in need. They are in need of a divine touch, a divine healing, a miracle in their life. We know that this is the scriptures that in the days of the apostles, they anointed a cloth, they anointed handkerchiefs or cloths, and they anointed them for the sick. And we believe today that we're practicing the word of God. We're asking and we're receiving. We're knocking and shall be open. We're seeking and we're finding divine healing tonight. Yeah. And let it spread from this message into the body of this individual when they place it upon their body. Oh, and then Jesus look at all hallelujah. of the sick and the afflicted and the burdened and personal needs and everything your people have need of tonight. You said, ask and it shall be in You said, lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. And we believe tonight yes. we're laying the authority of the ministry of Jesus Christ upon this anchor. In Jesus' name, every need here tonight, every need outside of this place, in Jesus' name, we ask and we believe. Praise the Lord, we say, praise the Lord, and praise the Lord, praise the Lord, and praise the Lord, and praise the Lord. Hallelujah. service get back in with us before we part tonight and celebrate your victory there and I must pray for our young people that God will go with them all the young people across the house you're welcome to go with the group now and be a part of them as they're going uh, to their youth meeting they'll study there they'll pray there and they'll seek the Lord there as our young people of our church and we are certainly thrilled to have all of you with us tonight. We've got an exciting week. Uh, Brother Wilkes, this is a pleasant surprise. I didn't know that they were coming, but he has a, he has a medical need to be looked into and happen tomorrow. And I said, come on down, Brother Wilkes, and be with us tonight here. And I think it's fitting that God can touch him. Yeah. God can Amen. help Brother Randy and Sister Tanya. And we're praying for their ministry. We never Amen. let up. We're praying for their work. Amen. Uh, they're very dear to us. They're part of this assembly. Yes. And uh, we'll be a part. Yes. And we know that God is going to lead them and guide them. They took a gigantic step in ministry <coughs> and faith following our convention last year. And, uh, or was it the year before? We began to pray over it the year before, didn't we? Yes. And then followed it in the prayer this last convention. And they went and they... Uh, left everything behind. They moved away from their police profession, 27 years on the Macon police force. Sister Tanya working also in the, on the police force in different department. And they said goodbye to that. And they took the step to go, uh, go and minister the gospel full time. Uh, every day, every way. And it's been a real test of faith for them as it is for most men. And women, uh, those that walk before you, they experience what you're experiencing. Amen. Uh, ministers of God yeah. uh, know suffering, they know test of faith, they know yeah. tribulation, and um, I can tell you all uh, that uh, we have prayed cons uh, consistently for you here in the church, and we're going to do that because you're bone of our bone, yes. and you're flesh of our flesh, yes. and I have no doubt that the will of God is being done and will be done Amen. in your life. Yes. And we have not retreated, uh, we have not regretted, and we have no remorse about the decision we made. My pastor, Brother Roberts, Jim Roberts, a great man of God, uh, said, uh, son, don't ever have regret about what God has asked you to do. And he said, then don't have any uh, retreat 
He said, no retreat, no regret. Uh, when God tells you to do it, go and do it. Stand by it. When he died up here on Manatee Avenue at the age of 83 years, my present age, uh, he uh, uh, held his hand across the bar of the bed and said, son, keep the church. As long as you live, keep the church. And I said, I will, Brother Roberts, I will. And that's been many years ago that he passed on that to be with the Lord. But I have kept my pledge and promise to God and to my pastor. I believe it pays to keep your vows to God. I, I, get, I think people get in trouble from making a vow and breaking it. I, I, it's the most dangerous thing you can do as a child of God is to make a vow unto the Lord and then break that vow. Uh, the scripture describes it as a dog going back into the vomit and eating the vomit uh, of their body. Uh, it describes it as being a hog, a sow that wallows in the mire, goes back and wallows in the mire once they've been cleaned up. And uh, it's a dangerous thing to make a vow and say, I'm going to come to church and then fail to keep that vow. It's a dangerous thing to say I'm going to give to God's work financially with my body, with my mind, with my spirit, materially, emotionally, and then break that vow because you made a vow to God. Yeah. You, you didn't make it to man. That was a vow you made to God. It's, it's dangerous to say, I will serve you, Lord, and then break that vow. Amen. People don't realize the danger of backsliding. Yeah. You may never get back to God. That's right. That's right. You may never come back. If you're contemplating backsliding, I would think it over and over and over again. Amen. Because uh, my father used to tell me as a fisherman, son, don't get too far from the boat. Um, and people get far. They take chances. They stay in the world. They go back to the world. Uh, they have the world too much around them. Uh, they need to separate a lot of times from the world. Well, I'll lose my job. It'd better be, be better for you to lose the job than to lose heaven. Uh, I don't know if God can make a way for me or not. Well, others have tested God, and others have tried God, and God made a way for them. Uh, uh, I, I don't know if, if I can do that or not. You can do all things. all things. That's what the Scripture says. You can do all things through Christ. Not in yourself, no. I'm weak. I told Mary when I started praying for her down here a moment ago, she said, Brother Marlow, I just feel weak. I knew that in a moment. God was going to give her strength. Yeah. See, because I believe, if, if you don't believe, nothing's going to happen. Right. Right. You pray. Amen. And when you pray and you're not believing, uh, nothing is going to happen. Zero. Amen. You're, you're going to get nothing from that. And, um, and there's a whole mental attitude that the church needs to take. And I said, the church needs to take it. Yes. I'm, not, I'm not saying the man in the ballroom, he can't take it. No. The man in the pool hall, he can't take it. No. The man that's drinking himself, the devil can't take it. But of all people on the face of the earth, the church ought to take the mind of God yes. and the mind of Christ yes. and rise up in it. Yes. And, and let this mind be in you. Yes. Philippians, the second chapter. But let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be made equal with God. Jesus didn't think he was robbing God no. when he became the God sitting beside him. Uh, he, he wasn't worried about God saying, son, you're crowding my throne. You're taking over my throne. Why, well, Jesus has a throne of his own. Uh, you know, God has his throne, but Jesus has his. Uh, do you know? And so uh, uh, he said, thought it not robbery, uh, making himself equal to God. Uh, you see, made himself, but he made himself. Oh, no, nobody made him. He made himself. Made himself. Did you know he could have taken the power that he had, the power that was in his words, just the words. He spoke in the garden, and they fell back, not down. Right. Just opened his mouth, and the, 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 the soldiers fell back. The power of his words, the authority that Jesus had, he could have, he could have ransacked the world. He could have turned the world upside down and made himself a king, and made himself a, a, a potentate on this earth. But Jesus didn't do that. No. He didn't do that because he knew that there was one 
greater than him, yes. and he would do what he said, not what Jesus said. Come on. He said, the things that I see my Father do, that I do. Yeah. The words that I speak, they're not mine, but they're the Father's that sent me. Yes. Praise the name yes. of the Lord. Amen. I, I see a victory in Christ yes. on this earth because he linked himself directly in to the God of God, Jehovah. Yes. And he never, never, never uh, made a disclaimer and said uh, that uh, my father isn't able to keep me. No. He knew his father would keep him. Yes. He yes. said, oh, Father, uh, I prayed to you and you heard me. Praise God. Uh, so tonight I think the mental attitude of the church right now is one step away from the New Testament latter rain revival. And did you know the gate, the, the, the latter rain revival is coming through? It's coming through a restored church. It's coming through people that have changed their way of thinking. It's, it's coming through truth in the bosom of, every, of overcomers. Uh, revival isn't a red sign you put out on the lawn saying we're having revival. Revival is not in that moving message sign out there that can run through there 24 hours a day saying revival, revival, and the, this church be as dead as a doornail in here, however dead a doornail is. And, and uh, you know, it could be, it, it, it could be uh, that way. But it isn't in the signs. It isn't in the publication. Revival is through the gate of the mind and the spirit, the heart. Praise our God. Thou shalt love the Lord thy yes. God all with all of thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. Amen. The church needs to take a mental Amen. attitude right now Amen. that we're more than conquerors. More than yes. Praise our God. Amen. Stop maximizing our defeats. Stop maximizing our, de our low days. Uh, let's start praising God and minimizing anything that the devil sends our way uh, and maximizing Amen. all the power that God has given us. Yes. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Did you get that? Amen. I want you to get that. I said we need to start minimizing uh, what uh, we, we uh, see as a defeat or a weakness. I told Mary, I said, Mary, in a moment you're going to be strong. Uh, she said, I'm so weak, Brother Marvel. I'm just so weak. I can't stand. I can't. Uh, you know the difference in uh, 60 seconds? Uh, we began to pray and pour out praise to God and call on ask. He said ask. Yes. He said ask. Yes. He said ask. Yes. And it shall be given. Yes. Right. Do you believe that tonight? How many believe that? Yes. Do you believe that ask yes. and it shall be given? Yes. Ask and it shall be given. Yes. Seek and you shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Uh, yeah. It's the mentality of our gate. Our mind is the gate. Yes. And and Christ uh, must, uh, th this is where he places the flaming sword. He places it right here in the gate, right. the word of God. Yes. And that's where you enter back into Eden. And yes. paradise is coming through this flaming sword, yes. the word of God. See, the, belief, the unbelievers don't have that. They have no gate. No wonder they're dead to God. No wonder they don't repent of their sins. No wonder they don't turn for the world. No wonder they don't give up the world for Christ. It's because they're dead. They're living in pleasure, but they're dead. Yes. They have no gate, and there's no flaming sword there. But the Lord put a flaming sword yes. at the east gate, uh, and the east gate <laughs> is now the spiritual mind of God, and that's where that the cherubims are, are, that's where the flaming sword is, is the mind of God in an overcomer. Praise Amen. our God. Amen. 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 And that word of God turning every way. Um, I want to get a scripture or so here involved just for a few minutes. And uh, we're, 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 we're believing uh, that God is going to do a great work here tonight. Do you believe God is going to do a great work? I do. How many believe God's going to do a great work here tonight? I believe he is. Yes, amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah! Praise God! Thank God I'm not dead tonight. Thank God I'm alive. Thank God I'm living in Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, I want to use a picture in the Old Testament here. Uh, we were in Exodus in our Bible study Monday night and uh, we had a wonderful Bible study here. Uh, but uh, and I'm going to skip through some verses. Go to the 25th chapter of Exodus. And uh, remember that uh, 
the invisible things of God in the Old Testament are seen only one way, by the things that are there. Now let's take Romans 1 and 20. Let's quote that. Let's get that. But the, for the invisible, but the invisible things of him, Paul said. Paul said, for the invisible things of him. That means you can't see them, does it? It's invisible. That's right. The only way you can see it is going to be through a revelation. And that revelation doesn't come to carnal minds. That revelation doesn't come to doubters. That revelation doesn't come to people who piecemeal God in their life. Uh, who never uh, set their life in divine order to where they plain, they make it plain to everybody around them, everybody in their household, that I am chosen of God, and therefore I am going to be different. And if you live with me, if you walk with me, if you abide with me, you can make up your mind, I'm of the common joke that eats soup every day. I, I, I'm, I'm a different person. I'm peculiar. You have to remind people you're peculiar. Amen. Remind people that yeah. you're a nonconformist. Yeah, Remind people that you may do something they call radical, yes. extreme. Uh, did you know God never creates a miracle without radicalism? That's right. A miracle itself is radicalism. Yeah. Right. See a cancer leave a human body. Yeah. Is that radicalism? That's right. Is that out of the ordinary? That's a miracle, isn't it? Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. God never delivers a miracle without extremism. God never delivers a, a miracle without something ridiculous. Right. A miracle is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to see a person get a divine healing, to see Mary here change a few minutes ago, and she was saying, I'm weak, I'm weak. In just a few minutes, she was saying, Brother Moore, I'm strong, I'm strong. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I feel strong. Yeah. I'm, I'm not weak yeah. anymore. Yeah. Praise yeah. our God, I'm strong. Yeah. Where did that power come from? Yeah. It didn't come from my hands. Yeah. didn't come from your hands. Yeah. didn't come from a human source. It came from the river of life. It came from the blood. It came from the miraculous. Praise the name. I believe the church ought to start shouting more about miracles and the blood and the sanctification and the atonement and setting us apart in Christ. Did you know this church here is literally a miracle sitting here? Praise our God. Oh, my, 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 my. I'm going to shout again. I'm going to praise him again. I'm going to give him glory again. Praise the name of the Lord. Because this is a miracle. It's a miracle I'm here. It's a miracle you're here. Some of you should have been dead years ago. You would have been if God hadn't have given you a miracle. Some of you should have been out of the picture, buried out here in one of these cemeteries. But God, but God, but God, but God, but God, but God. Some of you shouldn't even have been in America. You'd have been in another country. Yeah. You came from another country. Yeah. But God, but God opened the door God. and brought you to America. <coughs> so so this, this is a miracle I'm dealing with. And uh, the invisible things of him are clearly seen, being understood by the things, by the things that are made. The Old Testament is the New Testament by the things that are made. Right. Everything in the Old Testament reveals itself to be the New Testament. Yeah. Uh, by the things that are made. Amen. That's why God said to Moses in Exodus 25 and 8, he said, and let them make me a sanctuary. Yes. Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. You mean the God, the Jehovah God, uh, that um, is omnipotent, omnipresent, you mean that he, uh, he wanted something to dwell in down here? That seems peculiar, not does it? When he has the heaven of heavens. That can't contain him. He roams all over the universe. He's everywhere beyond the stars, far beyond Mars, Pluto, uh, Neptune, uh, any of the solar systems. You mean he wanted to have, yes, he wanted to be near me. I'm his creation. I'm his uh, divine creation. I'm his highest creation. So my father Adam fell and took that from me, but through my father Jesus Christ, he's restoring that. I'm back in his divinity. I'm, I'm back in the divinity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise our God. I'm walking with God in me. Amen. That makes me a God man. Yes. Did you know I'm a God man? Yes. I didn't say I was God. I said I'm a God man. Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise our God. Amen. When the Holy Ghost comes to you, you're a God man. You're a God woman. 
that God God incarnates himself in you, dwells in you, because he said, let them make me a sanctuary. Now look, that ought to to make you feel honored, that God will want to dwell in a five foot nine fellow like I am, uh, (laughs) aging with time, and God would want to dwell in me. But he said he would. Uh, Let them make me a sanctuary that I may dwell among them. And then he said, verse 9, <clears throat> according to all that I showed thee, after the pattern of the tabernacle, and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even uh, so shall you make it now. Now skip down, uh, uh, that is going down uh, to verse uh, to verse uh, 10, and, and he, 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 he said, now look, here's what, what I want you to do, Adam, uh, that is uh, Moses, he said, and they shall make an ark of shadow wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length uh, thereof, uh, and, 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 and a cubit and a half, cubit is 18 inches, and a half the breadth thereof, and a cubit and a half the length, the height thereof. So it was 18 inches high, uh, the breadth of it uh, was, uh, uh, that is, uh, I said 18, 27, it was 27 inches high, and the breadth of it was 27 inches across, and, and he said, Thou shalt overlay it, overlay it with pure gold. Within and and without shalt thou overlay it, and shalt thou make it up only a crown of gold round about. Uh, and thou shalt cast from uh, four rings of gold for it, and put them in the four corners thereof, and two rings shall be in the one side of it, and two rings in the other side of it. Yeah. This was all a picture making this ark uh, overlaying it with gold. Uh, did you know uh, the side of wood uh, was that of the creation of the forest, uh, but the gold was the creation of the furnace. And God has to take that which is the earthy, the creation of the earth, and overlay it with gold. Uh, the furnace. The furnace brings forth gold. Heat brings forth gold. Did you know your, your shot of wood, uh, where, where uh, the two uh, uh, a cherubim as well, the father and the son embracing one another uh, with a mercy seat underneath, overlaid with gold. Did you know you become uh, the Ark of the Covenant that uh, God literally dwells in you yes. and, he, and he positions himself with his son on their thrones above you, uh, but, but your wood uh, of the earth, the, the forest, the trees, has to be overlaid with that which comes from the first. Uh, God Amen. has to take that which heat brings yes. and, and fire brings, yes. and that's overcoming metal. Yes. Gold is overcoming metal. Yes. Uh, that's, that's the state of the overcomer. And God takes your natural state and your earthly state, and if, if you'll let him, he'll overlay you with gold. Yes. He'll, he'll make a, a mercy seat in your life. Yes. If you want a mercy seat in your life, you can have it. If you want a judgment seat, you can have that too. Uh, uh, if you want a judgment seat, uh, God can overlay you with a judgment seat. Yes. That'll be one judgment after another. One judgment after another. But here, God takes my, and makes my soul and my spirit uh, literally an ark, that is spiritually an ark of the covenant. And I've got the covering of, of, of the Father, the Son. I have the mercy seat. Uh, and, and then he puts the hidden manna the pot of it, hidden manna, revealed truth from God's word. He places it inside of yes. your bosom and your life. And you walk around peculiar and you're different yes. and you act different. You go yes. different places and you obey a different God Hello. than the God of the world. Yes. Praise God. Yes. And, you, yes. and, you, and, you, and you take your life and you give it to Christ. You don't just take yourself and guide it and go do what you want to do and be where you want to be. Uh, people give up houses and land and cities and states uh, to come and serve God and to do his will because they're being overlaid with gold. Yes. When you get gold or when you get divine overcoming truth in your life and it overlays the earth part, you'll never be the same again. Never. Praise the name of the Lord. And then in that, uh, and there's a hidden manna and then there's a rod. There's, a, there's Aaron's rod. And Aaron's rod was fruitful. It, it would multiply. It would bear. Uh, it would bear fruit. Uh, uh, the word of God is the only rod 
that will bear fruit yeah. in your life. Yeah. Praise yeah. our God. Yeah. It's the only rod yeah. of correction that will bear fruit. Yes. If you know men can chastise you with their rods, men can uh, uh, chastise you with their words, with their laws. If you know the laws of carnal men will never bear the fruit never. that the Word of God bears, uh, right. praise yeah. the name of the Lord. Lord. But Aaron's rod uh, bears fruit. Praise the name of the Lord. So then, then see the things, uh, he said, Romans said, the invisible things. Where am I getting all this from? I'm getting from revelation of the things that are not seen by the eye, but are seen by revelation. Yes. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. You just come into a church and sit there and never hear a preacher that has a revelation, that has an inspiration, that has a divine anointing, and you'll dry up in that church. Right. You'll, you'll dry up in it. Amen. Uh, I talked to a sister on the phone today. She said, Brother Marlowe, I visited your church twice, and I went back to my church, and something is missing. She <laughs> said, I, I just don't feel satisfied. I, I, I went there twice, and I heard uh, what was said, and I'm, I'm not the same. And she said, I, I think I'm going to have to make a move of some kind. I said, yes, sure. You're no better than the children of Israel. They had to make a move. Yeah. Wait, listen, when you're in Egypt, you've got to get out of Egypt. Yeah. I said, when you're in bondage, you've got to get out of bondage. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. You've got to get out of bondage because God will send a Moses by and say, let my people go. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. There's a Moses somewhere around for you if you're in bondage. I don't care who you are. God will send a Moses somewhere near you and say, let my people go. And if you obey God, you'll get out of that Egypt. And then after you get out of Egypt, you'll get Egypt out of you. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, Israel got out of Egypt. Uh, they just crossed the Red Sea. And they were over. Uh, but 40 years, uh, they were battling Egypt in them. I think that's the church. Again, that's the church. He takes us out of the world. But then we battle to get out of the world, the world out of us. He takes us out of the world. Then we battle to get the world out of us. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I thank God we're winning the battle. Amen. I thank God there's going to be some people uh, that wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb and make them white. And the Bible said their number cannot be numbered. The Bible said in the seventh chapter of Revelation that the number of them, the multitude of them that washed their robes in the blood of the Lamb could not be numbered. Praise our God. Amen. Oh, well, I thank God for that picture. Now, hurriedly here, lest I take uh, too much time and the whole meeting as if God wants to do something else. But that, that's a picture of uh, the Ark of the Covenant is a picture of the overcoming. Remember, uh, the, the Ark of the Covenant was not in the court. It was not in the court. The Ark of the Covenant was not in the holy place. And the, the Ark of the Covenant was in the Holy of Holies. Praise our God. And only the high priest could go in there and minister the blood to that Ark of the Covenant. Well, did you know you may make many altars in your life? And I, I don't have time to go through all this lesson, but I'll touch parts of it. I want Brother Wilkes to have time. He to get on his feet and songs and the family and, and the words of encouragement to us. But I can see there's a lot in, listen, we're, the Old Testament is the New Testament coming to life. Right. And you can take the Old Testament and you can see that the things that are hid from man, they're hid away, but the, thing, the invisible things of him are clearly seen, clearly seen, yes. being understood by the things that are made Everything that was made in that Old Testament, in that tabernacle, of Israel, was for a picture uh, for us to see yes. in the New Testament. Praise our God. Amen. Praise our God. Amen. Everything. 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 Yes. Praise the name of the Lord. Now look, uh, uh, when, when they made this uh, ark, and it was made, and they made the four uh, staves, uh, the, the four rings of gold for it, and, and they put the four corners on it, uh, well, you know, uh, there again, there was uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yes. There was four Gospels. And uh, there's four corners in Revelation 7 uh, where the uh, four angels are holding back the four winds. Yes. Praise our God. So, so, you know, it just keeps opening up. Uh, it just keeps opening up uh, from the Old Testament uh, to the New Testament. And, and then uh, 
Uh, look uh, uh, here, and I'm glad I want to make mention the 17th verse said, and thou shalt make a mercy seat of pure gold. I'm glad that there are, there is a mercy seat. Yes. I'm glad I thank God for the mercy seat. Yes. I would not be here if it were not for the mercy seat. Yes. Amen. Everybody, ought to say tonight in your spirit, I am here because of the mercy seat. Yes. It's not, somebody said, give me justice, Lord. Please don't say that. Please don't say that. Amen. If he'd have given you justice, You'd have been gone a long time ago. Amen. 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 Something would have got a hold of you. Something yep. would have taken you out. Yep. Something would have blinded your mind. Uh, I, I, because the justice would have been for me to have been destroyed. Because I was a servant of sin. I obeyed sin. I walked in sin. If he had given me justice, the night I came down to pray through, uh, I would have never made it past the praying through. Amen. I would have never got there. But thank God there was mercy. Yes. Thank God there was mercy. Yes. And a church without a mercy seat in it. Uh, you can't have mercy without judgment. They have to balance one another. Judgment has to kiss mercy. Mercy and truth have to meet. And judgment has to be balanced with mercy. But thank God for mercy along with judgment. And judgment from God is always fair. Uh, it's not like man's judgment. It, it's, uh, it's fair. It's right. Praise God. Surely shall not the God of all the earth do right. Abraham said, Surely shall not the God of all the earth do right. But he will. And, and uh, here uh, the mercy seat was put there. Now, let's go a little bit farther before I uh, stop here on this lesson. And, and, uh, and, and where does God meet us? Verse 22 in chapter 25. And there I will meet with thee. And I will, I will commune with thee from above the mercy seat. Where does God meet man? From above the mercy seat. Uh, he couldn't meet him from the judgment seat first. A man would never go past the judgment of God because he's sinful. He's an earthly creation. Man that is made a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So where does God meet you? He meets you from the mercy seat. It's the mercy of God uh, that he reaches out for you. It's the mercy of God that he forgives us. It's the mercy of God that he keeps the church. It's the mercy of God that he keeps the minister. It's the mercy of God. So he meets us from the mercy seat. And, and when we need help from God, it will always be uh, from above the mercy seat and, and, and between the two cherubims, which are upon the ark of the testimony of all things which I will give thee in commandment unto the children of Israel. And, and then uh, here, I, I, I'm skipping some things in here, but going over to the, quickly, uh, to the, um, uh, I believe it's, um, uh, let me see uh, where I want to go. Uh, here in the 30th, I really want to go and to the 30th uh, chapter, uh, but, but uh, let me give it, be sure. Yes, 30 and 18, uh, verse 17 in the 30th chapter. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a labor of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. The brazen altar set over in the corner, but uh, far from the entrance of the court uh, that surrounded uh, of the curtains that surrounded the tabernacle. Uh, and, and between uh, that altar, the brazen altar, and between that, uh, the labor was put. And the labor, notice, notice that God did not tell Moses to just make a labor. But he said, look, thou shalt also make a labor or a wash pen. Let's use a wash pen. That's a labor, uh, holding water. All right, and you'll make this labor of brass. And he, that's a precious metal. And his foot also, and his foot. So it had a, it had a, a that, it, it was a labor up here, and then down here, there was another small enclosure, the foot. And in that uh, foot, there was water to wash the feet. Because God did not intend for man to get in cheap. There is no cheap grace. Despite the television evangelist, there's no cheap grace. I said, despite the television evangelist, 
There is no cheap grace. Amen, but you know, if you really want to be saved and you're in this Wednesday night service and you're here on business and you mean to be God and you know Jesus is coming, uh, you better sit down and hear the word of God. You better become a disciple and you better not fool around and say, well, I was there Wednesday night. I'll see you in about a month from now. I'll be back at the church maybe a month and a half. I'll be back there when I'm persuaded. I'll be back there when I set my mind. I've got 20 things to do between now and getting ready for the coming of the Lord. Friend, God can cut you off in the middle of one of those things before the week is over. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, get serious with God. Uh, dedicate yourself to God. Uh, get your mind on being a disciple because uh, the, 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 the church is no longer in the wilderness. The church is out of the wilderness. The church is out of the wilderness. And we're to move forward in the promised land. Praise our God. I believe we have crossed the Jordan. I believe God has let us step in the last year of this local assembly. I'm praying others have. Uh, but I believe we have stepped on the stones, Amen. on the 12 stones yeah. in, in the river. And I believe we have crossed uh, the, the, the Jordan, and I believe it's time now for us to put up the heap of the 12 stones as a memorial and to go into the promised land yes. and quit fearing the city of Ai, quit fearing the, fearing the city of the flesh. But we, we know, we know the two spies, and thank God Tim may have brought back a bad report, but there was two that brought back a good report, wasn't there? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Their name was Joshua and Caleb, wasn't it? And they brought back a report, and they didn't say there's giants over there. It's a bad land. Uh, we, we're, we're nothing but grasshoppers in their sight. They brought back the grapes of Eskio. Praise the name of the Lord. They, they were carrying those grapes on their shoulders. And it was not little grapes out of the withered grapevine. It was those huge grapes of Eskio. Did you know Jesus Christ was the grapes of Eskio? And he was crucified, and his blood, the wine, ran out so that I can drink some of it and be free. Praise the name Amen. of the Lord. I, when you say, what were those two spies, Brother Marlowe? Well, thank God we have them right here. We have the old and the new. There's, here's your two spies that bring back a good report. We're able to take the land. Yes, amen. We're able to conquer. Amen. We're able to be overcomers. Praise God. Are you getting the report? Have you been listening to the ten spies too much? The ten spies of the flesh? Uh, ten is a governmental number. Did you know uh, that uh, you, you, are, are you are you listening to the wrong government? Uh, are you listening to the wrong source? There's two spies that said we have gone over and we have explored heaven and we've explored revelation and we've explored overcoming, and I can, we can tell the church now that we can pick, get your tents picked up, get ready, and sanctify yourself because we are going over yeah. and the land can be conquered. Yeah. Praise the name of the Lord. Yeah. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Lord. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to put this message in your heart. I'm going to put this message in your heart. The great Tedesco will come back on the shoulders of the two. Yeah. And they didn't walk back and say, Praise we're puny God. and we can't do it. And we're over there. <laughs> they came back and Caleb said, give me my land. Praise my our God. Right. I'm 85 years old, yeah. but I'm able to take my land. Yeah. I can plow my land. I can cultivate my land. Yeah. I'm going to the land of promise. Yeah. I, I'd like to see some strong people again yeah. in the church. I get tired of weak people all around me. I get tired of weaklings uh, moaning and groaning yeah. and saying, I don't know if I can be a Christian. I don't know if I can serve God or not. I'm not sure I've got strength to get back to another service. Shame on you. Yeah. Praise our God. Oh Amen. Shame on you. Amen. You need to rise up and say, I'm going to claim my land. I'm going to claim my land. I am an overcomer. I'm going to come away from weakness. Hey! Somebody 
God doesn't have the Holy Ghost right now and they're sitting next to you, reach over and say, you can have the Holy Ghost. You can have the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, lift your hands. I'll tell you how simple it is. Lift your hands. Repent of your sin. Say, God, forgive me. God, come in my heart. God, wash me. God, cleanse me. Now lift your hands and say, let the Holy Spirit. Let it come on me right now. Let it come in my mouth. Let me begin to speak. Praise God. Let me begin to talk. Let me begin to talk. Let another language come in my mouth. Right now, let another language come in my mouth. Let me get free. Let me get delivered. Let me be born again. Praise our God. And the Holy Ghost come down upon you. Why, I feel it in your mouths. I feel it in your mouth. Hey, it's in this building. Holy Ghost, he is in this building. He is in this building. Praise our God. He is in this building. You can get him right now. You, you just cleanse yourself. Watch yourself. Say, I'm the actor tonight. I'm an overcomer. I'm going to serve God. I'm going to God. I'm going to do his will. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's 
depression and you're hopeless. Don't look at what was and what has been and what it looks like, but get a hold of the mercy seat tonight. Praise our God. Amen. 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 Get up out of your chair and come all over this place, all over this house.
thank you, Lord. Well, 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 thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Jesus. Well, thank you, Lord. Well, thank you, Lord. Thank you for victory, Lord. Thank you for victory, Lord. I tell you, the Holy Ghost is very present here tonight. But we haven't seen anything yet. Because the church is going to get back to where God wants to be. It's going to go where God wants to go. And there's no man going to take any glory. You know the reason the Lord hit the church like he did a few years ago and made it, made it uh, tear down some of his idols and get rid of some of this? Because the church is making idols out of men rather than out of God. And, and he's the only God we should serve. You give honor to a man of God. You give praise to God. Never praise a man. Praise God. Praise God. Give honor to God. Yeah. Give praise to God. Yeah. You, you only give uh, give honor to whatever vessel God would use. But that honor is for God in that vessel, not yeah. that vessel. Yeah. You don't give praise to that vessel. You give honor to God that's in that vessel. Yeah. Praise God. So, so God is now rebuilding and restoring and bringing. Praise and he's bringing people in. Yes. And, uh, and, and I, I welcome people when they come. Ashley, I welcome you. Yes. Uh, you'll find peace here. Yes. You've never found peace in your entire life. Yes. I told you the other night, the Lord let me discern that you've been bruised and broken. As a good part of womanhood has. Mm -hmm. Did you know in the United States of America, womanhood is one of the most abused. We fancy ourselves being an educated country. But womanhood is more abused in the United States than many, many countries of the world. But God, God. To help you, Ashley. And you come and you you go past. You go past everything. But let 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 be overlaid with gold. I thank God this Ark of the Covenant. This Ark of the Covenant. He's overlaying me with gold. He's putting the two cherubims. He's putting underneath the mercy seat. And he's placing in it the hidden man. He's placing in it the rod that burns. He's placing in it the tables of the law. Amen. Praise God. So we're, we're, I really appreciate this service. I, I want Brother Wilkes to say something, whatever God would give him. You know, I, I don't like to put, I never, I, I don't want to do that. I want to put a preacher under a form or a program or a, a burden on him. He'll, he'll, he'll do what God tells him to do. He, he doesn't have to make any certain mark for me. I know this man is a preacher. I know this man is anointed of God. I know this man is called of God. And I know that for some reason God has interwoven him into my ministry and my life. And I'm going to take care of that. I'm going to encourage this man. I'm going to help this man uh, because uh, I'm not going to let you. Because I've, I've been along the road. I know what the road holds. I'm, I've been I know what the road of the ministry. And I want to see this great gift of God. This is a great gift of God. Is it? Brother Randy Wilkes has a great anointing from God. And, uh, I want to see that anointing used in the church. And uh, it may not be, uh, not at all what he thought or Tanya thought. God may throw a lot of reverses and a lot of uh, turn right and turn left. Uh, but I know this. I know God has put him on my heart. And I know that as long as I live, I thank God for my fathers in the ministry. Amen, brother. You better thank God for fathers in the ministry. Yes, amen. You better thank God for fathers. I didn't say herders and drivers and cattle rustlers. You know, I didn't say that. And there's a lot of cattle rustlers in the ministry. And there's a lot of herders and whip guys. You know, but you find a father. Yes. You find a father. Amen. You know a father. You can tell a father when he's talking to you. You can tell a father when he's speaking to us. Man, right. I, I knew a lot of men, but I was only one father. And, and the natural, I knew one father in the ministry. And they were good to me. That, the father I had in the ministry was one of the greatest men I've ever known in the ministry. And he wasn't a flamboyant preacher. He didn't, he didn't demonstrate a lot, did he? But when he spoke, he said, listen, because the words come out of his mouth. It was from God. 
simple message that God used him. Praise God. Amen. And I, I can tell you this. Uh, 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 let's go ahead because I want to, I want to uh, hold you all. And if you leave before, and I want you to do it. I want Brother Randy to stand up. Then I'm going to close the service when he, whenever, whatever God does. But um, uh, I, um, I don't, don't leave. If you have to leave, remember the Wednesday night offer. If you haven't received it, and um, let it be on your heart. Do what God tells you to do. There's the offering box in the front of the Praise church. And, God. and I, I, I'd like to receive a bountiful offering, and God can give it, even this way. Even not receiving it now, I, I want to put it ahead of those men and what the Lord would uh, give him to say. But, um, and I want to thank God for my precious sister, my sister uh, back here in the back. Praise God. I, I, I want you to know, child, you come to God tonight. And Amen. don't you... Uh, don't you go back to your home. Your home. The Lord gave you an experience that was great in God. And you're home tonight. Praise God. Brother Marlowe. Yes. That's Sister Virginia's granddaughter. I know it's her granddaughter, but I got one of those mental blanks on me. I can't I can't call her name up to the cash register, but God, God will uh, Angeline. Angeline. Praise God. Angeline, right? And did it come close? Angelina. Angelina's. Praise God, that's Angelina's. But come close. Praise the name of the name. We welcome you. We welcome you. In the end of the church. Because uh, you're here. God brought you here. And uh, thank God for you. And so we want to thank God for the service. All is done. And look forward to the service tomorrow night. And for Charlotte. Band leave at six, and uh, just right on through the week, end of the weekend. Praise God, uh, Brother Randy Wilkes. It's an honor to have you. Uh, you don't have to be under pressure to do anything, but I uh, want you to do what God wants you to do. But greet the people at least, and then from there, I'll be out uh, there. Say something, Brother Randy Wilkes, Macon, Georgia. Yes. Praise God. <laughs> You love the Lord tonight? Yes. 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 God. Yes. Appreciate God for, for everything that he's doing. And I appreciate Brother Marlowe's message uh, dealing with the tabernacle and the different pieces of furniture. I love that, that teaching. And, uh, to know that that tabernacle is a picture of us. Yes. And, you know, the whole plan of salvation yes. was in that tabernacle. That's yes. right. You know, and I think about it as, as I was growing up as a child and the things I that I went through and the things that I experienced before I came to the Lord. I was a very troubled child and, you know, a lot of people didn't give a lot of hope for me. And, you know, but what they didn't know is that God had a different plan. <laughs> so what I was going to say about that tabernacle just for a second is that it, on the outside, that, that thing was ugly. Yes. It was ugly. It was, it was covered with animal skins and it, it just did not look like God could even exist. In something like that. That's Amen. right, brother. And I guess what I'm going to say to you right now is this: that don't judge a book by its cover. All right. Amen. Amen. Don't judge it based on what it looks like. And I'm talking Amen. about people, because now we're the tabernacle of God. Amen. And many times the people we judge and the people we say, man, they, you know, this or that, they can't have God. You don't know what's on the inside of them. That's true. They could be the very right. next apostle Paul. That's Amen. right. They can be that, right? Yeah. So. I want to say, be careful how we do that, you know, and don't judge it because it's beautiful on the inside. God sees what is on the inside of every human being. Yes, he does. And I believe every human being that's, that's born into this world has some kind of destiny from yes. God. I believe that. Yes. And thank God he's given you a destiny, right? Yes. He's given you a dream. He's given you a hope that one day that you'll be with him throughout eternity. Amen. Amen. So can I just talk just for a second? I'm going to keep you more in about 10, 15 minutes. I know it's late, and you, you know you got to go to work tomorrow. I understand that, and I, I won't keep you. But I want to leave you with something to encourage you, if I may do it. And if we could, just look real quick with me in 1 Samuel chapter 4. And, uh, 1 Samuel chapter 4. Praise God. Praise God. Blessed be the Lord. Then we're going to go over to Matthew chapter 1.
and read a few verses there, and then I'm going to speak, and I'll be sitting down here. But here in 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 11, it says, And the ark of God was taken, and the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were slain. Jump down, and then verse 17, and it says, And the messenger answered and said, Israel is fled before the Philistines, and there hath been also a great slaughter among the people. And thy two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, they're dead, and the ark of God is taken. And it came to pass, when he had made mention of the ark of God, that he fell off of his seat backward yes. by the side of the gate, and his neck brake, yes. and he died, for he died. For he was an old man, heavy, yes. and he had judged Israel for 40 years. Yes. Start listening to these next few verses. Yes. And his daughter-in-law, Phineas' wife, on, was man. with child, near to deliver. And when she heard the tidings that the ark of God was taken, Come on. and that her father-in-law and her husband were dead, she bowed herself, travailed, and her pains and came upon her. Yes. Verse 20, and about the time of her death, the woman that stood by her said unto her, Fear not, for thou hast borne a son. But she answered not, neither did she regard. Verse 21. And she named the child Ichabod. Everybody say Ichabod. Ichabod. Saying that the glory of God has departed from Israel because the ark of God was taken and because her father-in-law and her husband were killed. Yes. Real quickly now, keep your hand there. I want you to go with Matthew chapter 1. I'm going to read these few verses, and I'm going to tie it together here. Verse 21. Listen to this. And, there shall bring, and she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Yes. For he shall save his people yes. from their sins. Yes. Now all of this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet saying behold a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son and they shall call his name what Emmanuel, Emmanuel which being interpreted is God, God with, us. with us everybody just give the Lord a hand clap Hallelujah. right there Hallelujah. thank God In these two verses of scriptures that I just read, I want you to, to see something here. We see two names that are mentioned. And I want to talk about these two names because in these two names, there are two spirits. And we can determine which spirit or which name we're going to partake, partake of. Come on. And so Amen. let's take a look at the first one. So we see over in 1 Samuel chapter 4, we see that this lady is pregnant. She gets the worst news of her life. She's had the worst day of her life. How many of you in here has ever had a day where you wish you never had, had woken up had woke up that morning? And she had one of those days where, you know, it just seemed like the hits just kept on coming. I've had many of those days where I felt like, man, I can't take another thing. And this lady was there. Think about it. The ark of God, she gets the news from the servant that the ark of God has been taken. Yes. It's been stolen. She sees that the blessings of God are gone. The, the, the favor of God is gone. Uh, the ark of God has been taken away. Yes. She gets that bad news. And then all of a sudden, here comes another servant. Comes in and says, on top of that, your father-in-law, Eli's dead. He fell out of a rocking chair and broke his neck when yes. he found out the ark of God had been stolen. Yes. But then here comes another servant with more bad news. Says to the woman, not only has these things happened, but your husband has been killed. And all of this hits this lady at once. In one day, it all hits her all at once, just comes upon her so much that she goes in to labor yes. to deliver this baby. The Bible says that when the baby was born, that the lady named the baby Ichabod. My God. For the glory of God the glory of has departed. Wow. What, is the, what is the message here? I want to tell you today this, that never, ever, ever name your future according to your present circumstances. Amen. Are you with me now? Amen. Just because she was having that kind of a day when her child was born, her child was her future, she named it based on, she said, surely the glory of God is gone out of my life. Surely the glory of God is gone from my family. 
Surely the glory of God has departed from my life. I, it, it will never get better. She had her baby named Ichabod. The glory of God has departed. But let's fast forward to the verse that I read in Matthew. We see another name. We see a name called Emmanuel. Which means God is with us. And I'm preaching to you today that Emmanuel is greater than Ichabod. Amen. And I don't care what kind of season you're facing Amen. in your life today. I don't care what you're going Amen. through today. You may feel like the glory of God has departed. Amen. You may feel like this is it. It's oh, always no. going to be that way. But I came way down here to tell somebody that Emmanuel, God is with you. Give him a hand clap of praise right here. Would you do it? of Ichabod has gotten a hold to the church. Yes. It's gotten a hold to the body of Christ. That, that spirit of saying, there's no more miracles working in the church. That yes. spirit that is saying, there's yes. no more Holy Ghost moving. Yes. There, there's people today having conferences, preachers saying that the move of God is over. over and it, 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 it can't happen anymore. Well, but I'm here to tell you that God is still with the church. Yes. God still can do miracles. Yes. God can still fill people with the Holy Ghost. He can still change people. Give him a hand clap for that. Amen. He changed your life. Ichabod, Ichabod. Oh, I've had an Ichabod spirit. You, ever, you know, that old spirit that just holds you back. That old spirit, you know, it's like, you know, you're just so defeated. You come into church and, and you, you ask somebody, how's your day? And they go, oh, I'm trusting the Lord. And you just see how they just walk around and, you know, depressed and all that. And I know we all go through something, but I feel there has to come a time that we have to realize we can't allow Ichabod to be hanging on us. We can't allow that spirit to keep holding us back, keeping us from moving forward and keeping us from being in peace and joy. That spirit will rob you of your peace and joy. It certainly will. See? God is with you. I don't care what you're facing. I don't care how bad it looks. Amen. It may look like he it may look like he can hide, but in reality, I'm telling you, it's Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. I was thinking here, uh, as we as I was sitting here thinking, and I was thinking about how Joseph and Mary, you know the story? Yes. She she was supposed to be marrying this guy. And you know, they were supposed to keep their self. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Lord sends an angel to Mary. And the next thing you know, Mary's pregnant. She runs off. Joseph don't know, don't know where she's at for three months. She's at Elizabeth's house. And then three months later, Mary comes back and she says, Joseph, we got to talk. And she, he sees that little pooch on her. And Joseph says, yes, obviously we need to talk. Right? Can't you just see that Amen. Ichabod spirit come on him? Amen. He, you know, can't you just see him saying, this is bad, this is not good, the glory of God has departed from our relationship? Can't you just see that? But here's what I want to tell you, because I want you to catch what I'm just to say. What Joseph thought was Ichabod was really Emmanuel. It was really Emmanuel. And I'm telling somebody today that yeah. what may look horrible to you right now, yeah. right. what may look like you've taken 10 steps back, what may look like is not working for you right now, yeah. be patient because Emmanuel is with you. Yeah. And in that Emmanuel is there, God is in it. Just wait on him. Just trust in him. Just believe in him. I'm telling you, he is for you and he's not against you. Give him a hand clap of praise, would you? God is with you. I said he's with you. Woo, glory. The reason why I can preach this with such passion is over the last few weeks I've had a battle with Mr. Ichabod. I sure have. I had me a little pity party. I had me a little party saying, God, I think you have forsaken me or something. Yes. But he reminded me. When I read that verse of scripture, Amen. God is with us. Amen. And I'm telling you, he's with you Amen. as well. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Some of you in here need to leave differently tonight. 
with faith and confidence that God is on your side. I'm telling you, he's with you. Praise God. You know, I was thinking about Jesus. You know, what a, what a powerful, powerful story when you look at that concerning what I'm talking about right now. Yes. How that he left heaven. Yes. Stepped through the curtains of heaven and he came down to this earth to to lay his life down and to become a servant. Yes. To save the lost. Yes. Amen. And the very ones that he came to save, of course, rejected him. Yes. They slapped his face. They spit upon him. Yes. They strung him up between heaven and earth. Shamed him. Did all those things to him. Yes. And when he was on the cross, even your Savior had a thought of Ichabod. For just a moment. Amen. Father, Amen. why have you Amen. forsaken me? Amen. That Ichabod spirit was even working yes. with your yes. Savior. Amen. But I want you to notice he didn't allow it. That's no. right. The next words that he said was what? Nevertheless. Yes. Nevertheless, oh, yes. not my will, but thy will be done. Yes. And he calls out to his yes. father. Hallelujah. I can see him. Wow. He's probably saying, Emmanuel. God is with me. Yeah. God is with you. You believe that, don't you? Oh, oh, oh. Give the Lord a hand clap for me. Yeah. 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 I want to leave you with something here. As I sit down here, I'm just to sit down. I just want to read another verse or so. I guess what this whole message is about is changing our attitude in the midst of our crisis. I need this message tonight. If you don't, I do. I need this, what I'm saying. This is encouraging me right now. I want to let you know that the key to God's heart is not the Ichabod spirit, but the key to God's heart is being thankful. Yes. Being yeah. thankful. A thankful heart will move God. The children of Israel stayed in the wilderness all those years because they could not stop the complaining. And I've been guilty. I'm sorry, but I've been guilty in my life of complaining when I got in situations that I did not like. Am I the only one in this church that's ever done that? This building tonight? No, no. I, I, I've been there. And they could have easily made it in just 11 days. They could have been in the promised land, but because they couldn't stop. And so the Lord said, your attitude will always determine your altitude in God. And wow. we have to begin to change things in our life. We have to quit thinking like the Ichabod way and begin yeah. to think the same way Christ would think. Amen. Be thankful. <laughs> and I want to show you something here now with this scripture in John chapter 6. I want to show you how being thankful and having a right spirit can move the hand of God to do a miracle in your life. It can happen. So look with me in John chapter 6, verse number 11. We know what's happening here. Jesus says uh, they're in a dilemma. they got to feed 5,000. And, you know, he's in trouble. As far as in the natural, it looks bad. He could have got a Nicobod spirit right there. You know, he's in a dilemma. But I want you to see what happens, what he does when this miracle takes place. I want you to notice this. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of it before, but it caught my attention. And I want you to see. And Jesus took the loaves. And when he had given what? Thanks. Say it with me. Thanks. When he had given what? Thanks. Thanks. He began to do what? He distributed it to the disciples and the yes. disciples to them that yes. were set down. And likewise, the, and the fishes as much as they would. Notice when the miracle took place. Yes. It took place when Jesus said thanks. He gave thanks. In the midst of his dilemma, in the midst of his insufficiency, in the midst of, 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 of it looking like it's not going to work out, in the midst of it looking like the, the, the checking account, the banking account is empty. There's not enough with two fish and five loaves. He didn't get the Ichabod spirit and begin to complain and whine and say, God, you put me in this situation. No, but he thanked God for what he had. And when he began to thank God for what he had, it multiplied. All I'm saying is begin to thank God for what you got. Don't complain about it. Don't whine. But God, thank you for my house. God, thank you that I got a bed to stay in. God, thank you I have a car to drive. Thank you I got a job. He don't pay much. But thank you for that. And when you begin to do that, I'm telling you, you're going to move God and miracles will begin to happen in your life. You do believe that, don't you? Give him a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Be blessed.
Hallelujah. May the Lord be with you. Hallelujah. Amen. Did you enjoy that? Amen. I only heard a little bit of Brother Wilkes, but he'll be he'll be back to hear more. And Tommy, she'll be back to sing. He's uh, back there. Uh, we love you, and I'm glad because you see, I knew what you was doing the last few weeks. You did. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm a father, and I knew that Ichabod was trying to work you over. Glory we better kill that fellow and chase him out of here. Amen. Right? Amen. Get rid of that ache of spirit, Brother Bob said. Amen. Because that isn't what God wants. No. We can do all things. We are exalted, Brother Marlowe. That's a good sound. No, I'm not exalted. No. I'm well aware of where Satan lives and where his seed is. Where his seed is. Yes, Satan has a seed. Yes. And I know where his seat is. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I know. I know. I know that we can chase him and make him flee. Resist the devil. Right, Draw nigh to God. Now, if you give him a lazy board recliner in the front room, he's going to be there the rest of the time. You know what he'll do at noontime? Yes, I go fix me something to eat. <laughs> but get him out. <laughs> I used to hear an elderly black minister for the Saunders that he would say, Get the devil out of here. Get him out. Get him out of here. We don't want him in here. And say, Praise God. Time to make Satan flee. And, uh, we really, really appreciate Brother Wilk's message. It just ties right in. Uh, we, we, God's good to us. God's good to us. Yes. All the time. Yes. So welcome to do it this way. Hallelujah. And God's going to bless you for doing it this way. Uh, I feel like the Lord has supplied more than supplied the need tonight. Amen, brother. Before we go, I want you to be of one mind and one accord. Praise and where you're sitting, I want you to pray for the Wilkes family. I want you to pray for their ministry. I want you to pray for the church here, the body of Christ in general. And uh, let's remember Brother Dean Harris. He came through the surgery good yesterday, well yesterday. And the doctor said he felt like he had accomplished getting the bones back in the position. And I stayed with the family until I heard him say that. But Dean has been in a lot of pain, an excessive amount of pain, and uh, just suffering. Sherry is suffering with him, and the family. Hunter is here, and Haley is here tonight. Haley and Haley were here tonight. I think both Haley's were here. Yes, they were both here. So, uh, but let's pray for Dean and, and the family. Let's pray for Sister Sandra. She's been suffering in Manatee Memorial, really suffering. And we want to pray for Sister Sheila Cullen. She's a man to the Lord. So keep those in mind, in prayer, and ask God to help them as well as many others, many others. But we're going to uh, keep God's people in front of the throne. Brother Marlowe, we have dinner in the dining room this weekend. Thank you. You gave me that note, and you know me well enough to know, don't you? I put it down somewhere. We have dinner in the dining room. People hand me notes and I put them down. Yeah. But they're used to that around here. <laughs> they haven't declared me senile yet. Praise God. For, for, for dinner this Sunday, for dinner tonight, we need salad fixings, dinner rolls, and dessert. Not too much at all to burn. Salad fixings, dinner rolls, and dessert. We'll do that and we'll look forward. We're looking forward to a good day. All right. This is, um, uh, pray for Paul Deese. Uh, and we will pray for Paul Deese. Uh, this request is for Paul Deese. And so we'll just ask God to help him. And uh, Sister Pat knows well that this is a request for prayer. But I think it's a request just just a general need.
that's not anything that's coming in, just a general need. Multitude of needs. And uh, Paul Deese tonight, uh, her daughter Tammy is married to Paul Deese. And so we'll pray and ask God to uh, help Paul. Paul receive the Holy Ghost in the convention center. So we're going to pray now. And now I want you to pray right now. Before you go, say where you are. Let's pray for these needs. However you pray. Don't leave. Be one mind, one accord, and then we'll we'll go out. And as we go out, we'll give our offering. We, we don't need a song. We don't need to come back and we don't need to have another <coughs> song. We'll give our offering as we go. Brother Dale, did you have a request? Shaking on that ground sometimes, if we're well, not slipped off the rock, the devil might make us feel like we get that away. You're going through a, a battle, I, I, I can almost tell you, but that's close enough when you start saying, The Lord's going to protect me. Yes. I just said, Stand your ground. <laughs> that wicked body you're talking about, <laughs> he said, God hath departed from your house, what he was saying. Mm -hmm. Glory of the Lord. Thank God for a house that believes in the old-fashioned power of the Holy Ghost. Yes. 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 We're standing by you, brother. Glory Amen. to God. Amen. I anointed that come from this way. Amen. I say it again. Stand your ground. Stand Amen. your ground. Hallelujah. 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 Well, that to you, but that was my gift from God to you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Did you know that law is our law? Stand your ground. Yes. Resist the devil. Stand yes. your ground. Yes. And he'll flee from you. Yes. Let's, let's pray. Before we move, do anything, let's pray right now together. Uh, however you pray, join in. Pray. Let's see God. Father, thank you for this great outpouring. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for the Holy Ghost that came tonight and watered the whole church and refreshed us and lifted us up and gave us courage and saved souls and baptized people in the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Lord, tonight. Ichabod is not in this house. Ichabod is not in our house. The glory of the Lord has not departed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I believe you'll heal the family, Lord. And you'll deliver the earth. And you'll be with your people. And you'll help them. I believe tonight we stand our ground and resist the enemy. And I know we have victory. And we leave this building tonight with victory in the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord. We lift our hands, we lift our hearts, and we shout victory, victory, victory in the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. And we believe tonight for every hospital, case, every need, every elderly, every sick, every, every home. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands with your pastor and say, In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. It, is it is done. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise Thank you, Lord, for this great service. Amen. Mix and mingle. As you go by the offering box, just give your offering. And 